Illinois outlasts Iowa State in the Elite Eight. Get into the Elite Eight. Wow. This was the matchup between the top defense in the nation against the top offense, and offense reigns supreme. Terrence Shannon Jr. and Illinois, 72-69. Shannon Jr. goes for 29 points. Coleman Hawkins adds 12 for the fight in the line eye, and Iowa State is done. Despite Curtis Jones, who goes for 26. Uh, Keyshawn Gilbert adding 14. This game was tight down the stretch. I mean, it was at a two-point game at one point, and see, it's a three-point difference in the end, 72-69. And Illinois on to the Elite Eight to face UConn. So it's the champions of the Big East against the champions of the Big Ten, and the champions of the Big 12 are going home. And we are back in studio with Adam Finkelstein and Chip Patterson. Uh, Chip, how the heck did Illinois win that game? By jumping all over Iowa State from the beginning. I mean, what do you do with a team that relies on its defense to be able to impose its will? Well, you force them to play keep up. I mean, I saw Iowa State pressing on offense in the early stages of the first half. And so at that point, you could almost see that they were rattled. Iowa State never led in this game. Iowa State was only tied once, and that was for less than a minute in this game. Yes, it did get a little nervy coming down the stretch, and Illinois did itself no favors with about, what, 50% from the free throw line. A lot of missed shots for the Fighting Illini, but ultimately, I think the game was won in the first 10 minutes when Illinois dictated what kind of game it was going to be. Not that it was high scoring, but just the fact that it was going to constantly make Iowa State play keep up. That is not something that the Cyclones are really built to do. So uh, credit uh, the way that Brad Underwood and his staff got this team ready to go because I think jumping all over Iowa State at the beginning of the game changed the matchup in a way that favored the Illini. This was a referendum on Illinois' roster construction. Marcus Domask has had a terrific season, but he is not a prototypical point guard. In fact, Illinois doesn't start a prototypical point guard. And so for them to play the team that is as good as anyone at forcing turnovers, being Iowa State, and to only have 12, now, that's not great, but it's not awful. And that was the key to the game. They sustained their pressure, they didn't turn it over, and then they out-talented them, quite frankly, because the Illinois roster is significantly more talented than the Iowa State roster. Give TJ Otzelberger and his staff a ton of credit. They are ahead of schedule. They have overachieved with this roster, just to say it plainly. And as they continue to upgrade the level of talent they have in that program, they're gonna see better and better days ahead because they are certainly farther along at this point than anyone anticipated, given what they had on their roster to start this season. Chip, Iowa State, had been 25 and 2 when yielding 70 points or fewer. They give up 72 in this one and lose. It was as if they needed a couple more stops and they might have won this game and the Cyclones might have been moving on and said it's the fight in the line eye. Yeah, and I think that for Iowa State, you're going to go back and you're going to look at those missed opportunities. You're going to look at the fact that, like, Milan Momchilovic, after having four straight games in double figures, one single point, 0 for 4 from the field, a non-factor with just 22 minutes. Terrence Shannon Jr., on the other hand, absolutely lights out. I mean, Illinois only had two players in double figures in this game. That would be Shannon and that would be Hawkins. Um, Shannon is the kind of player who can put the team on his back. We talk about why teams advance in the tournament. And Hakeem, you mentioned the good offense, good defense. To me, it's about bucket getters. And there are very few players left in this tournament right now who can just go and get a bucket the way that Terrence Shannon can. He can do it in the open floor in transition. He can do it in the half court. And so I... I think that that's what makes Illinois dangerous, or at least a, a minimal threat to UConn. It's just the fact that if Terrence Shannon goes out and drops 35, 40 points, you know, something that he has done in postseason play, uh, then it could get a little dicey for the Huskies. Chip Patterson, Adam Finkelstein here on the win for Illinois. They're moving on to face UConn. What a matchup that is going to be on Saturday night in Boston at TD Garden. It is Illinois and UConn for a spot in the final four. Now, we're going to be transparent here with you, okay? Terrence Shannon Jr. is going to hear a lot from the UConn crowd in Boston. Just to give you the perspective, if, if you're just maybe hadn't been following along, but Terrence Shannon Jr. 
is the player who was suspended by the school in late December. He was arrested, charged with one count of rape or sexual battery for an alleged incident in early September. He missed six games before a federal judge granted an injunction. He was able to return to play. He has denied the allegation. A preliminary hearing in the case is now set for May. So that is hanging over Terrence Shannon Jr. and Illinois as they continue on in this tournament and they continue on Saturday night against UConn for a spot in the Final Four. Coming up, back out to Boston, Illinois, Iowa State down to the wire. Matt Neulander joins us with a live report next on CBS Sports HQ. Matchup of the nation's best offense against the nation's best defense and the nation's best offense wins. How about that? Brad Underwood and the coaching staff for the fight in the line eye with a super soaker in there. That's fun. Everybody's having a good time. 72-69, the final from Boston, where they hold off the Cyclones. Terrence Shannon Jr., another outstanding game, 29 points. Coleman Hawkins adding 12. And Illinois on to the Elite Eight for the first time since 2005 when they went all the way to the title game against North Carolina and lost. And now they get a date with UConn. Get right to the site. Welcome to CBS Sports Senior Writer Matt Norlander, who joins us from TD Garden in Boston. Matt, describe the final minutes of that game because it could have went one way or the other. It got as close as two. You saw the final score, a three-point win for Illinois. How'd they hang on? Well, there was a rising tension in the building, no doubt about it. And the thing was, Iowa State could not hit so many bunnies. I mean, it shot sub-50% on dunks and layups in this game. Meantime, Illinois going, I mean, from the foul line, 15 of 29 and allowing Iowa State to hang it around, hang it around. And, uh, and yeah, no, they had uh, they had alligator blood, but they could not get it done. Illinois was able to, to pull out this win. And Terrence Shannon Jr. was the reason why he did sit for about five and a half minutes in the second half when he got that fourth foul. He finished with 29 points. And then once he was reinserted back into the game, it was the energy jolt that Illinois needed to ensure a win. If, if he had not been on the floor, I'm fully confident Iowa State would have found a way to get this victory, but it did not. Offense did beat out against defense here, and Iowa State's going to have some regrets about a way it opened the game. It just it, it didn't play well in the first half. Illinois didn't even capitalize and make the lead larger than it could have been in the first 20 minutes, Akeem. But ultimately, it's enough to hang on. It wasn't a pretty offensive night, but it didn't matter. Illinois had enough. It just simply had enough to hang on to edge. It wanted to get to 70 points at least against a really good Iowa State defense. It did that. Iowa State fell just short of hitting the 70 marker. And there we have it. Third seed in Illinois. Back to the Elite Eight for the first time since 05. And it's going to get the best team in this tournament in UConn on Saturday night here in Boston. We really hadn't talked a whole lot about Illinois, right? I mean, end of the season, they go on the sweet run, win the Big Ten tournament. But I don't know throughout the season that we really considered them a team to be reckoned with. Did we kind of overlook Illinois now that they're playing here for a spot in the Final Four? I, uh, Hakeem, I, I know you're teeing me up there. I'm going to say no, but I'm speaking from personal experience on this in terms of what I, I wrote a feature on Illinois with Brad Underwood earlier in the season, in early December. I saw him in person at Madison Square Garden when they beat FAU and what Underwood had done, big picture with this program. And then a few times in January and February on the Ion College Basketball Podcast, uh, to me, Illinois just seemed like a team that was a was a valid Final Four dark horse at that point in the season. It's hard to say you're a dark horse from the three line, but in the East with UConn at the one, it's still qualified here. So uh, a win like this when when the entire nation is truly watching you don't have four games going on at once like the first weekend um this gets even more attention obviously illinois fans have been waiting for this moment for obviously almost two decades to finally break through but it, it's gonna I, I will say this uh, it's illinois is going to need to play probably twice as good on saturday in order to beat uconn and uconn um if it just shows up in his uconn it's going to win the game here you're going to need more reliable offense and this is the two best offensive teams in the country by the way Mm -hmm. UConn is number one in adjusted points per possession at Ken Palm. Illinois is number two. Those teams have buy, been vying for the number one spot overall. But uh, got to keep the turnovers low. Illinois had 12, which is a good job against Iowa State. They're going to need more. Marcus Damask, who's been a big-time player this season, he only had seven in this game, two of 11 from the field. He's going to need to play better, and Terrence Shannon Jr. has to avoid foul trouble. But I don't think we have been overlooking Illinois. It is now just in a spot here where it's going to have arguably the high-profile, highest-profile game of the entire regional final on Saturday and Sunday, and it's a huge opportunity in front of them. 
They have the offense to do it. We'll see if defensively they are up to the task because UConn very rarely lets up on both ends of the floor. So listening to you there, it sounds as if you've got UConn onto the final four. Yes, no, I do. I have you. I had picked UConn on Selection Sunday to win the national championship. I picked UConn to beat Illinois in the Elite Eight on Selection Sunday. So I had this matchup, uh, you know, all of uh, two weeks ago here, Akeem. But I'm not going to shift off of that. I mean, UConn has been a machine. My overnight column for CBSSports.com will be about Illinois and can it do what no team has looked like it can do, and that's beat UConn in this tournament. UConn is on a historic run dating back to last year in terms of consistent double-digit margins. Can someone slow down UConn? Illinois. Illinois looks like the team best equipped to do it, at least on the left side of the bracket. So we'll see if, if Illinois indeed does give some true resistance to the mighty powerful Huskies on Saturday. It does set up to be a potentially amazing matchup, or it sets up for yet another UConn runaway by double digits. We'll see if Illinois can finally buck the trend. Yeah, you might have to uh, tell Dan Hurley that game's at just after 6 o'clock Eastern. They're not even playing the late game on Saturday. Maybe he'll get, he'll get fired up. Again, give you another great soundbite. Matt Norlander, he's in Boston for us here on CBS Sports HQ. Matt, thanks. <laughs> Illinois and UConn for a spot in the Final Four Saturday just after 6 p.m. Eastern time. Illinois looking for his first Elite Eight appearance since 2005 when they got to the National Championship game, lost in that title game. UConn looking to go back to the National Championship and run it back. It all goes down Saturday night from Boston.